about positioning. Uh, just some basic practices here of, of how we set up our patient for the procedures. Uh, now, because we're dealing with the extremity, most of our procedures that we do, we're always instructing our, our patients to hold their breath, don't move. Now, when we are taking x-rays of the hand, or the wrist, or the forearm, is it necessary to tell them to hold still and hold their breath? It'd be fun. Huh? It'd be fun. It'd be fun? Okay, you can do that, because it's part of saying, don't move. I mean, yeah. They'll be like, why are you trying to hold my breath? Okay, but hold still, don't move. It's not necessary for you guys to tell them to hold their, their um, breath. Now, when we start talking about body parts that approaches the bony thorax, this is still considered upper extremity, right? But well, look what happens when I'm breathing. Okay? So when we start going past the elbow, now we're going to incorporate um, having the patients hold their breath for this type of study. But for the fingers, the hands, the wrists, not so much. Okay? The other things that you guys want to take to, to consideration is we're taking a, an x-ray of the extremity what should we have the patient do to prepare for the exam? <coughs> Are there anything else that we need them to remove? Any artifacts? Jewelry. Okay. Rings. Jewelry, rings. Okay. Watches, Watches, bracelets. bracelets. Anything Finger. that's radio pick that will show up on the radiograph. Any artifact. Okay, exactly. Any type of artifact that will show up on the radiograph, we're going to have them remove it. KB is based on body part thickness. So do we need high or low KV for the fingers, the hands, and the wrist? No. Not necessary, right? So we're going to do a low KV range for, for most lower extremities, but as we go past the elbow approaching the, the humerus and the shoulders, the clavicle, now we're going to increase our KVs a little bit more. Uh, we're going to uh, try to apply short exposure times. What's the whole purpose of a short exposure time? That's exposure. We're trying to minimize what? Motion. Motion. Okay? As long as the total mass stays the same. Remember the law of reciprocity, right? If you're going to have a shorter exposure time but trying to maintain the total mass, what are you going to do with MA? Increase it. You're going to increase it, right? So shorter time, higher MA. Longer time, lower MA. Lower MA. Okay, so if one goes up, the other one goes down, and then vice versa, as long as the total mass, the total exposure remains the same. So in this case, we're probably going to go with a lower mass. I'm sorry, a uh, shorter exposure time. What's like, when you say low KV range and medium KV range, mm -hmm. what's like the average for Okay, so, the, so for fingers, again, I'm only talking about experience because it's going to vary from facility to facility. Okay, so... In some, some places, the average KV for a finger will be anywhere between 45 to 50. Okay, the wrist, about 50. My forearm, about 55. My elbow, about 60. See what's happening with my KV as I'm going up? Yeah, 60, 60, and then maybe about 65 or 70 for the shoulder. Okay. Um, center cell, if you're using a grid, shoulder, we'll talk about this later on. Um, Cross, cross this out for just a moment, because this doesn't apply to you guys anymore. So cross out the fourth bullet point. Focal spot size, another consideration. Do we want large or small? Small. small. Why do we want small? The small body parts, small, better detail. Small body part, but more importantly here is for greater detail. Okay? So we're going to use a small focal spot size. The two, the two that we use, do we... Is there a way to, to, to uh, we haven't went over it, but how to? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the control panel, uh -huh. you can select your large or small. Okay. So, you haven't been shown that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, we'll show you guys that. So, you can actually select the, the focal spot size. So, we want small for small body parts. Okay. Your SID is generally at uh, most of the procedures that we do is going to be based on 40 inch SID. It's what we get for the uh, best quality image. We are also, uh, it's the best distance to uh, avoid any type of magnification. Anything more or less, you'll get magnification or more exposure to the patient. So 40 is kind of like the, the, happy, the happy path, the happy road, in which we're going to get good quality images and also minimize the amount of patient exposure. Okay? So SID, 40. We'll talk about AC joints again later on. <clears throat> All right. Got other considerations. 
When you're taking x-rays of the extremity, it may be post-cast. And different casts, you will use different types of technical factors. If it's a wet plaster cast, you're going to use 15, about uh, extra 15 kD more because it's more thick or more dense. Right? So are you adding the 15 on top of the? You're adding a 15 on top of the original kD. Okay. <laughs> when you have, when it's dry, okay, no more water is, you know, it's dried up, it's evaporated, so you don't need as much kV than the wet. And if it's fiberglass, it's more penetrable, so you don't need that much more. Maybe just about five more for penetration. Okay. So again, some key considerations. All right, you guys ready for positioning? Let's do some positioning here. Uh, patient seated at the end of the table. Patient's head is turned away. Provide gonadal shielding. Okay, this is what we're going to talk about here. When you are taking X-rays of the extremity. They're not gonna be laying down on the table, they're going to be sitting down on some kind of chair or stool. Now what I suggest is you use a chair or stool that doesn't have any wheels on it, okay? Because if there's wheels on it, there's a likelihood of them moving around, yeah, moving around and then falling off the seat or the seat goes out, out from underneath them, okay? So something without wheels. <coughs> So they'll be sitting down for the x-ray. Now, most commonly, if you don't think about this, they'll be sitting <coughs> just like this with their hand, just like so, okay? What's the problem with this type of position? What's going on here? My gonads are in the way of the primary, beam. primary beam and also scatteration because if you're sitting like this, the beam is going to hit the tabletop, and now where is it going to go? To Towards thyroid, where? Thyroid. It's going to hit my thyroid and eyes. my eyes. So when we place the patient for an extremity x-ray on the table, we are going to be turned off to the side or back facing, like so. So now their eyes are, the, are away, their thyroid is away, and their going out is not in the path of scatter in the primary beam. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Collimation. Collimation is important when dealing with extremities because collimation, as we know, improves detail. And important when we're dealing with the small body parts where detail is important. So collimation twofold. It, you're going to reduce the amount of exposure, so you're only going to open the field to the area of interest, but we're also improving the quality of the image, okay? Uh, provide gonadal shielding. Shield, 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 shield. You shield everybody, okay? Um, body part alignment, we'll talk about positioning the image receptor to the body part, to the, the tube. Detailed screen, scratch that off. Okay, we're not dealing with, uh, we're not dealing with film anymore, so scratch this off. Okay, but do you guys remember screen speed? Faster the speed, the better the detail, or? Slower the speed, better slower, slower the speed, better detail. Yeah, slower speed, better detail, but you also have to use more technical factors. That's right. But now we've eliminated that because everything's computerized. You guys are spoiled. Cross <laughs> that out. Okay, okay. Direction of the bones. We'll talk about the direction of the bones when you're taking uh, an, an x-ray. Um, two projections are necessary, 90 degrees from each other, so basically it's either an APPA and a lateral, a, P, P, A, and a lateral, okay? Generally two, now if it involves a joint, now you gotta have three views, because we're evaluating bone and joint, okay? So we'll talk about this later on. <clears throat> All right, let's do the fingers, guys. Now, these are some older images. What you will notice here, what you will notice here is they're positioning the body part not on the center of the image receptor. You notice here that the body part here for this particular finger is off to the edge. Well, this is what we used to do. We used to take one cassette and we do three positions on one cassette. So there will be three images on one film, all right? So don't get yourself all confused by saying, oh wait, wait a second, how come the body part's not in the middle of the cassette? Well, it's because this is an older older image. So it should be placed in the middle of 
the uh, new image receptor, but this is placed based on, on film radiography. Right? But the concept of positioning is still the same. So again, this is why it's on the edge. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. yes. I'm getting some blank looks. In the old days, we used to project, we used to do three projections or four projections on one image receptor. Now it's just one on one. Okay? All right. So, PA finger, the central ray for a PA finger. Does it matter which one it is, or does it? Yeah. This applies to only digits two to four. I'm going to talk. To, I'm going to cover the thumb separately. So, PA finger of two to four. Okay. Palm is going to be face down. It's supinated, right? So it's face down on the image receptor. You're going to collimate to all four sides, and the central ray will be directed in the proximal. Proximal what? Proximal interphalangeal joint. Okay, your hip. Okay, that's your right here. This knuckle right here. So it's going to be centered right at the proximal interphalangeal joint. Central ray is perpendicular. SID is going to be what? 40. 40 inches, all right? So you're going to collimate the anatomy not to not just on the fingers, you want to include the distal part of your metacarpals. Okay? So collimation is, doesn't stop right here. It's going to go right here where my the, the mid palm of my hand is, right about here. Okay? When taking the x-ray, it's it's indicative. It's important that you have to include adjacent segments. That's how we know that you got the entire anatomy on the image to include adjacent structures. So in this case, we got to include adjacent metacarpals. And you also want to include the other structures on the other side. So you open it up, you're not closing it right here just for the finger, you want to open it up slightly to include the <coughs> other digits. Only a little bit because we need a point or base of reference. Okay? Because if you call me too tightly, it's hard to tell which digit you are taking a radiograph. So we need a reference. Everybody got that? Okay. So call me to include the distal metacarpals and adjacent structures. Okay? And also making sure that you don't cut off or clip off the top of the fingers. Lead markers. You need your lead markers, right? We have a left and a right, so you need to make sure you use your lead markers. <coughs> yes? Um, the lead markers, which way do you position them again? Okay, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you that in a bit. Okay, so in, a, in, a, in the class, in our, in our lab, we're talking about marker placement. There is an etiquette that we follow in which, you, where, uh, in which you decide that you place your marker. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. All right. <coughs> So, place your marker somewhere in the field. With a field that small, how would you, where would you fit your marker at? Well, here's the catch. Okay, remember I said, call me tightly, but to include adjacent structures. You may also have to open it up a little bit more Just to fit the marker in. To fit the marker in. Okay. Okay. Now, do you guys remember your cassette, <coughs> the, image, uh, the image receptor, the cassette that we, we were practicing on the last couple of days? Remember on the edges, on one edge you had the, the thick marking on the top? Okay. So you would place it so that the fingers are pointing to the thick marker of that image receptor. That thick line on your image receptor is the top of your display screen. Did we talk about that in the lab? No. I thought I did. Mm -hmm. okay. You guys know what I'm talking about, the thick line on the image receptor? If you look around the image receptor, there are lines, but on one side there's a thick white line. The thick white line is the representation of the top of the display screen. So if you don't orient that image receptor correctly, let's just say the thick line was towards the wrist, when it pops up, you're going to have a hand that's upside down. Okay. 
So you place the fingers, you place the fingers towards that thick line. Everybody got that? Write it down somewhere. I mean, you'll probably remember it, but just put the finger towards the, uh, the thick white line. What about when you put it in the bucket tray? I'm not talking about the bucket tray yet. <laughs> I'll talk about that later on. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that later on because we actually had a long discussion about that in lab the other day. Uh, but because it's something, something different, I'll talk about that later. Okay, I don't want to lose focus here. Okay. So, uh, the long axis of the finger points towards the, the, the thick line of the image receptor. The way it's going to look, okay, because you will also be critiquing your own images to make sure that you've done the correct position, because how do you know whether or not your image is good? Well, you better understand anatomy and how they should look on a radiograph, so that way the doctor or your senior tech doesn't come back and say, you know what, you need to do this again. You should be able to recognize if there is an error before you submit it to the radiologist so you can fix it. Does that make sense? You're critiquing your own images, so you gotta know what you're looking at. Yes. Are you allowed to retake it without being told that that's okay? Not as a student. Okay. okay, it's gonna be up to your CI to determine whether or not your study warrants a repeat. Okay, but that's not for you to decide, it's gonna be your CI. Okay. Okay. You're saying to check and fix it before you turn it in, but... Well, yeah, you'll be with your CI, but what I'm also saying is, as a technologist, you are expected to know what, what you took, and if it's, if it's acceptable, okay? All right, so the long axis of the finger is gonna be straight up and down, pointing towards the thick part of the image receptor. It's going to have, it's gonna be symmetrical in appearance from the distal proximal distal proximal, uh, sorry, distal middle and proximal phalanges. That means there's equal, equal concavity on both sides. It's symmetrical. It is equal concavity on both sides of the phalanges. <coughs> Symmetric uh, soft tissue on each side of the shaft as well. The joint spaces, and the joint spaces that we're talking about here are your interphalangeal joints, your metacarpal phalangeal joints here should be nice and open, right? Are, are they not open? Mm -hmm. Are they open? There is no overlap of the structures. There is an opening be in, uh, between the, uh, the structures, okay? Any questions here? Okay, so where's your central ray directed? The PIP. The PIP, okay. What's your SID? 40. 40 inches. What's your KV? Approximate KV? Do you want lower medium? Low. Low. Lower medium? Okay. About 40 to 50. Okay. What are we going to tell our patients? Don't move. Don't move. Hold still. still. Don't, Don't move. move. How should they be seated? Walking away. away. So it's not just the eyes, it's also Body. your lap. The lap has to be away. Okay? Hold still. Don't move. <coughs> keeping your eye on your patient before you, you take a radiogram, okay? Because again, we've said this over and over, that once you leave the room, you be like, hey, where are you going, or hey, what's up? Okay, they think you've done what you needed to do and they start moving around, okay? What are we gonna do with our exposure times? Keep them short. 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 What are we minimizing there? Motion. Motion. Minimizing motion. motion, all right. All right. Here we have the oblique finger, oblique finger. This applies to digits three to four. Your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky. Only digits three to four is, up. this is what the position applies, uh, applies to. What happened? Three to four. Oh, it should be three to five. Yeah, I'm sorry, this should say three to five. So change change your slides. It applies to three to five. Why not two? I'll get there. <laughs> okay. I'll I'm get so there. anxious. <laughs> okay. So this applies to dishes three to five. Three to five. Last slide you're saying two to five. Is it two to five also for the other one here? What did it say here? This applies to two to five. Two to five. Did I say two to five for this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So two to five for this. Three, three to five, five for this. Okay. Well, let me fix this real quick. Because <laughs> now it's
Okay, three to five. You're gonna place from, from the palmer surface, on the palms down, you're gonna rotate. Lateral. Which way are we going? Lateral. Laterally, or what's that other term? Ex external. Externally. Okay, so you're going laterally or externally from the palm down. Okay, we're going towards the side. So we're gonna re rotate our hand 44 T5 degrees. And we have positioning sponges to get that 45 degrees. Now you can eyeball it, because here you're gonna go somewhere between flat and lateral, so between flat and lateral it's gonna be 45 degrees. But what I suggest, again, what I say and what's done out there may be two different things. I would use a positional sp uh, sponge, a 45 degree angle sponge that they can rest <laughs> their hand on. Because if you try to tell them to put their hand on a 45 degree angle, <laughs> What's going on here? <coughs> Motion. I had a little bit too much to drink. <laughs> right? So I can get a little shaky and how is that, how is that gonna look on your finished radiograph? Not good. It's gonna look blurry. And now what you have to do? Retake. You gotta take it again. So we can avoid that by taking that extra step by using a 45 degree angular sponge. Okay, you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Same rule applies depending on which Digits you're going to take an x-ray of, again, this only applies to 3, 4, and 5. Where is your central ray going to be directed? It's the same as the PA. Pip. At the pip. Okay? So if you're taking an x-ray of this, it's going to be at that pip. If it's this finger, it's going to be at that pip. Pinky is going to be at that pip. Okay? Collimate on all four sides. You want to include the adjacent structures as well as what? The okay, proximal what? I'm sorry, distal. Metacar distal, metacarpal. distal metacarpals. <clears throat> okay. Now let's talk about the second digit. <laughs> so we're not going externally or laterally. Which way are we going now? Okay, let's go back over here. Where am I going? <laughs> Where am I going? <laughs> what? You're going forward. Huh? Am I going the right way? No. No. I'm hitting the arrows. Okay, there. <laughs> so why couldn't we just keep in this position to take a picture of the second digit in the oblique position? What's the problem with this? What? OID. OID. Look at the distance from here to here. What's is OID good or bad? Bad. Bad. Why? What happens to the structure? Does it look to the size? Magnification. It's magnified. And anything that's magnified, what happens to detail? You lost. You lose detail. So we don't do it this way. We do an internal. Am I going the right way? We go an internal or medial rotation for the second digit. Because it puts it closer to the image receptor. The closer the body part is to the image receptor, less chance of magnification, less chance of loss of detail. Okay, so it's gonna be internal rotation or medial rotation for the second digit. Same applies, where's the central ray directed? Pip. Pip. Coloring it on all four sides to include, to include adjacent structures and the distal metacarpals. Is this making sense, guys? So the interphalangeal joints and the metacarpal phalangeal joints are going to be open. The long axis of the fingers are going to be demonstrated on the image receptor. Again, make sure the thin fingers are pointing towards that thick white marker on your image receptor. We're doing this tabletop, right? We're not doing Bucky. This is tabletop. Why are we doing Bucky? Less than 10 centimeters. Remember the Bucky is used for body parts greater than 10 centimeters. The fingers are not. So we're going to do a tabletop is what we say, okay? No superposition, superposition of the adjacent fingers. Notice here that the hands are nicely spread. We don't want no overlap on the fingers. They're going to be nicely spread as we're taking <coughs> the x-ray, okay? Here's another thing to keep in mind. When you're in a bleak, make sure that the hand is going to, the finger is parallel with the image receptor. When you're placing it on a sponge, 
the fingers are parallel with the image receptor. Not like this, or not like this. What happens when you have either this or this? What's happening to the joint spaces? Closing. They're closing up. So you want to make sure, again, that the, depending on which uh, finger you're doing, it's going to be parallel with the image receptor. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, no angulation. It's got to be per uh, parallel with the image receptor. Yes. Um, the book says that uh, the medial oblique option mm -hmm. is maybe painful for the patient. So, how would so which one here? The medial oblique. Yeah. This medial oblique. Yeah. Okay. So the question. So the book says the the this may be painful because it is kind of it's kind of tough to do this. Okay. Because there may be some injury to the wrist or maybe the forearm. The book is just simply a foundation. So if they can't do this, we're gonna do this. This is for the second digit, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll do we'll do this instead of this. Okay? And just get the best image you can. You, you do what you can based on the patient uh, patient's condition. Remember, you can't force them to do anything because you can actually exacerbate the situation. You can make it worse. So if they can't do this, then leave it at that. We'll get some magnification and we'll, sh we'll shoot it. Okay? Nothing is set in stone. Okay? Again, what we're giving you guys is just a basis, okay? just a foundation. You will see that there are many variations of what we you here out in the field. Rarely will you have what we call a textbook patient. You're gonna be faced with challenges. And this is where you guys got to use your brains to figure out how to get those views and projections for the doctor. Can we tape these three? You can do that. You can use tape. You can use a tourniquet. But just, all you got to do is spread it. Yeah. This is really not hard. They can spread it. But, it feels, but if they're like this and they can't, then maybe you can try to separate it by using tape. I've used tongue depressors. I've used tourniquets. I put I put cotton balls in between the fingers to separate them. Bless, Bless you. you. Oh, that was cute. <laughs> 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 so, you can, <laughs> so you can use different radio uh, radio lucent material to separate the fingers if necessary. But again, only you would know if you have to by assessing your patient. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now. To critique your images, to critique your images, there is going to be, remember in the PA, remember the PA, there's going to be equal concavity on both sides. You guys agree? It's even on both sides, yes? Mm -hmm. Equal concavity on both sides. Now, in an oblique position, you will have greater concavity on one side. And on the other side, it's going to be more straight. You ever got that? More concavity on one side, while the other side, the other border, is more straight. Is this on any oblique or just the second? This is on any oblique. Yeah, whether it's your medial oblique or lateral oblique. Increase concavity on one and uh, straight on the other side. Okay. And again, they open up their collimation. We want tight collimation, but we still want to include adjacent structures and the distal metacarpal. And going back to what you guys were saying earlier, you may have to open up your collimating field to include your marker if it doesn't fit. Okay? That's the exception of opening up your collimating field because it's more important for us to know what side we are taking uh, an x-ray of than not knowing it. Okay? Questions? <clears throat> All right, lateral. This is lateral. This applies, the lateral applies to the third and fifth digits. The third and fifth digits. So you're going to place the lateral surface, I'm sorry, it's actually the needle surface. The needle surface of the hand flat on the image receptor. Okay, and depending on which, which digit it is, Okay. 
may have to use a sponge to separate it from the rest of the digits because simply just holding your fingers like so, you're not getting a clear image of the proximal phalange. So you may have to get a sponge to separate the digits like they are doing here. You said third, third, third to fifth, third to fifth digit. Third through fifth, right? Third through fifth. This applies to third, uh, the third through the fifth. This is lateral, okay? Which is the medial, your medial surface down in the image receptor, okay? So I've done the same thing here. I've used positional sponges. I've used a pen to separate the rest of the digits, a tourniquet. Do whatever you need to do to separate the rest of the digits away from the digit of interest, okay? Okay, got it? Central ray directed at the, pip. it doesn't change. It's gonna be at the pip, okay? Now this one, because in the lateral, look how far your second digit is from the image receptor. We are gonna do the lateral surface on the image receptor. So it's gonna require a medial rotation placing the second digit close to the image receptor. 